Hi there, it's Heather from Kestrel Field Studio, and today I wanted to just tell you the story of the first time I ever went on retreat and how that ultimately led to me creating my very first art residency, um, which is also a retreat, but it was focused on art and it was thinking about me as a professional artist becoming one, and so I'm calling it an art residency. But let me start by telling you about 2009. I was going through some just, you know, personal history, personal context, trying to figure out who I was in the in, in my 30s and trying to, you know, just wrestle with what was going on with my heart and my family. And my counselor at the time suggested I go on a retreat. And I ended up going to this place called St. Walburg Abbey. Um, it's north of where I live. And it's a it's a sort of a retreat center and abbey. Like literally nuns are there 24 seven. They pray like seven times a day. It's Catholic. Um, they have a beautiful cathedral, sacred space, and beautiful land um, out in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> and it was an amazing experience because they had this retreat center where they invite people to come and do personal retreats. And what an amazing experience it was. I went for two nights, three days, and they cover your breakfast and dinner and provide supplies for lunch. And they generally leave you alone. And I was shocked with how productive it was. I mean, literally, I feel like all I did was sort of stare off into the distance. There was no cell signal. Um, I did a lot of writing. I did some reading. To take a break, I would listen to the occasional podcast, you know, just to like not have to think about myself all the time. And it was, it felt so productive. I left after three days having so much more clarity about some of the things that had been bothering me. And um, I don't know, it just really felt restorative. It felt like I knew myself better. It felt like I understood some things that I'd been struggling with just through writing and sitting and taking the time. And so it was overall a great success. I feel like it was a turning point for me personally. And so in 2012, I decided to do it again. And I rented a cabin in the woods in um, near Rocky Mountain National Park. And again, I just did two nights to myself. I took some crafty stuff. I took some good food. And I eliminated cell phone possibilities and internet. And I just was there by myself. And once again, I wrote some letters. I went on a few hikes. It was wonderful. I loved it. And so the next time then, that's when I started thinking about, I should do this for art. And so in 2017, I did that. Um, I had, there, there was no Airbnb then, VRBO was a thing. And so I was looking at the options I had and it was like mostly beautiful places for vacationers. It wasn't a place that was designed for art making. And, um, but I found a place that could work. It had beautiful natural light. It was in the mountains. Um, it had a single bed. It had a really basic kitchen and it was quiet and no one was going to bother me. So I took my car full of stuff. I took an extra table. I, I think I took a nice chair. I, um, took a ton of art supplies. I took so many art books and I was just so excited about what was I going to do for five days as an artist in the woods. It was so exciting and I thought before I left of what sort of projects I wanted to do and I took all the stuff so that I could do them. Maybe I would do them, maybe I wouldn't, but I, I wanted to have all the things I would need. And so I drove into the mountains. It was about an hour and a half drive from where I live and I got there and immediately started moving furniture. <laughs> they had a really plush carpet. Um, they had this furniture I didn't want to mess up with any paint splatters or any, just, you know, the kinds of accidents that can happen in an art studio. And I moved my food in and um, sort of put myself on a schedule. And it was so amazing because, again, I was by myself. I had an agenda of what I wanted to do. And I had the time and the space to do it. So, so I did it. I was on high. I was just living and eating and breathing and sleeping art. It felt so... Gosh, validating, I think is the word. I think to myself, I mean, 2008 is when I started thinking of myself as an artist, right? And this was 2017. So this was nine years into my artist journey. And 
this is maybe the first time that I felt like, oh, I'm a professional artist. I have set aside, set aside time and space for making the thing that needs to be made. And I, I hardly could sleep. I was just so energized. I was so high on art. And I ate, but I don't remember anything about the food, even though I'm a cook, I can make good food. But I remember feeling annoyed that I had to eat. <laughs> so anyway, that is where the concept of Kestrel Field Studios originated, because if I was so happy in that moment, I was so content, I was I felt such validation. And just and I had created that for myself. Like I didn't need a teacher. I didn't need a prompt. I just needed that time and that space with my stuff, with myself and some ideas. And I wanted to go for it. And so I did like a four or five hour activity where I drew myself like a self portrait from life. Like I had a mirror set up and I put a big piece of paper on the wall and I'm like, great, let's go. Let's draw this. Like, so I did that. <laughs> Um, I did some art journaling. I really wanted to just flesh out some sketchbook drawing sketches. Just I wanted to just spend time with my sketchbook. Um, I did a lot of reading. I was really inspired by figure drawing at the time. And I had a book from the library all about Gustav Klimt and his history and, and how he would draw the figure and why portraiture was interesting to him and sort of how he started into that realm and how he became the artist that he became. And I was so inspired. And then his contemporaries, Egon Schiele and Oskar Kokovich, I think that's his name, Kokos, Kokoskic, Kokos, anyway. <laughs> um, those, those three men were in Austria at the turn of the 20th century, and they were doing really interesting things. And they were sort of talking to each other. They were engaging in, communi in community with each other. And the three of them have a legacy today. So I just was really enjoying my my time reading about them and looking at their work and studying it and and exploring how they got from point A to point B. And it was truly a wonderful art experience. And I also noticed that I was worried about getting paint on the rug. I also noticed that the table wasn't adequate. <laughs> um, the light was incredible, but I was just sort of not in an art studio like i wasn't in a space designed for artists right and i was respectful and did everything i could to be to keep their space nice and i moved all the furniture back when i left but um i really wanted to f think about how could i create a space for the art community that would take away those worries i guess it would make it so it was more just designed for creative people and that ultimately so that was in 2017 and here we are in 2023 and and here it is kestrel fields art studio <laughs> Ta -da! um so much has happened and i can always tell you the story of how this space came to be but i wanted to tell you about just the origin story of kestrel field studio because it really felt like um it, it felt like a gosh it was like a career move it was a it was learning about construction and building a building um it felt like a dream it felt like a way i could give back to my community it felt like a space i could use for my own art making or own creativity it felt like a way to support the people i want to support it felt like a great way of living my values so anyway that's how that's why it became what it did by this stage right it came became this but i want to tell you one last story about that weekend when I went on retreat in 2017. So my last day, I packed up the car. I said goodbye to the little place. I was so satisfied with my five days of art making. And I had a little bit more time before I needed to get home. So I decided I drove to Denver and I decided I would go to the art museum. And I went to the Denver Art Museum and I walked in the door and I was like, you know, this time I'm actually going to make art. I'm going to be an artist in the museum. I'm not just going to be a viewer or an audience or a spectator. I'm going to be an artist. And when I walked through the doors with that mentality, I almost started to cry because I had just done this thing where I had made art for five days. And then I walked into this institution where artists are revered. Artists are, are respected and they are encouraged. And in fact, their work is hung on the wall for anybody to come and see it. And like 
their, their process is celebrated. And that includes going on retreat, doing art residency, right? Like, and I had just done that. And I felt so validated that I just, like, here's a place where people appreciate artists 100%. In our society, there there aren't a lot of spaces like that, you know? So I took my sketchbook and in the museum, they have these like little foldy up stools that you can, they, they have them sort of strategically placed around the museum. So I went in search of a little foldy up stool and I went to the, I wanna say it was the European gallery at the time. I decided to sit down in front of a painting and draw it. Like just spend an hour just drawing. And you know, artists around the world have been doing that for centuries. <laughs> And I just had never done it before. I thought, how can, how can I be any self-respecting artist? And I've never sat in front of a painting or some sort of an image in a museum or a sculpture, and I've never drawn it. And I did. And once again, I had that really strong sense of this is what I'm supposed to do. This is who I am. This is my identity. I'm good at this. I deserve to be here. I deserve to make things. Like all, all these feelings just while sitting there drawing, sketching the faces of these two little girls um, in a field from the 1800s. It's a painting by um, William Bouguereau. Um, he's famous and it's one of the most beloved paintings I think in the Denver Art Museum collection. And surprisingly, another thing happened. I had no idea this would happen. I got to witness other people's experience of this painting while I was sitting there drawing it. So like, what a gift. It was so wonderful. I was there in my sketchbook, you know, doing my little thing. And I was, I looked as though I was engrossed in what I was doing. And I was, but you don't not hear people talk about what's going on in this thing that we're all jointly looking at. So I did that. I just got to witness these people. I never looked at them. I didn't make eye contact. I didn't engage, but I listened as they appreciated this lovely painting by Bouguereau. And it helped me to appreciate the painting. It also helped me notice things about the painting I hadn't noticed before. And it helped me to sort of fall in love with the painting in a fresh way, besides what happens when you also sit down in front of something to draw it. That's, that's also a whole nother way of appreciating art. But I loved the experience of hearing other people's experience. Um, one last little thing that happened while I was sitting there is I noticed there was somebody, there was a little presence, maybe about five feet away from me, just observing me. Like I, I wasn't, like I said, I wasn't talking or looking at people. I was just engaging with this, but I noticed the energy, right? And I feel like the energy made itself known eventually to be a little girl. She was um, maybe eight or 10 and I could see her shoes out of the corner of my eye. And she was watching me as I was watching the painting. And, you know, at some point I turned to her and I said, hi. And she was really shy and, you know, didn't know what to say. And so I just carried on. And finally she said, sort of in a quiet voice, you're a really good drawler. <laughs> she was so cute. I so looked at her. She had braids and she had red hair and freckles and she was so cute. And I said, would you like to see? And so she came over and, and we looked and I said, I'm just practicing. I'm, I'm an artist and I, I'm practicing and I'm having a great time spending time with this painting. And what do you think? You know, we had a little, so we had a little exchange and talk about validation, like for somebody to sort of revere me in that moment was really special. And I ran into her later on in the day when I went to go look at another exhibit after I'd finished with the drawing. And, um, and I said, do you want to see what I did? And she was like, yeah. And so I opened up my sketchbook in this other gallery with hundreds of people for the special exhibit. And I showed her the drawing and she's like, that's really good. And, you know, for me, it was just a sketch. It wasn't anything super special but it pleased her and it pleased me and that felt important so anyway that's the long story of how kestrel fields studio and art residency came to be and i really can't wait to share more stories with you and whether it's about this place or whether it's about my own art journey and how much i love to engage with other artists and 
love to talk about the process and love to create time and space for people to feel the feelings that I felt because of that experience. So thank you for sticking with me through this video. I'm so grateful that you're here and I look forward to talking with you more about the creative life. Take care.